Gamma Expo is here and we got lots of news from the game night demo with 9 new cards, a first look at 4 cards and even an industry presentation which gives us lots of insight into the Locana overall strategy. Let's check these out. Hi everyone, this is Dsummer from Mushu Report where we cover all things Locana. There's lots of news from Gamma Expo to go through, so let's get right down to it, starting off with the brand new cards. First up, let's start with Amethyst Ink, Dr. Fessler Charlatan, who confirms that we get the Princess and the Frog in the first chapter. He's a 2 in character with Challenger 2, which is similar to Prince Eric that we saw at Gala TCG. That said, he has 0 4 stats instead of Eric's 1 3, so Fessler gets 2 strength only when he challenges. With that in mind, I prefer Eric's stats still because there are many 2 in characters with 3 wheel power, so that 1 strength can make up the difference between damaging a character versus getting rid of it outright. Next, we have the card which totally changes everything, possibly pushing Amethyst to be the top ink of choice for many people with friends on the other side. This is a 3 ink song card which means that you can exert a 3 cost or higher character to play this card for free and it lets you draw 2 cards. Sounds kinda like Pot of Greed from Yu-Gi-Oh doesn't it? Yes, you have to exert a character to play for free, but if you compare it to the options like Beast Mirror or Magic Mirror where you have to spend 5 to 6 ink just to draw that first card, this is a massive deal. The card draw for Amethyst doesn't end there though, because we also have Maleficent Sorceress, which gives you one card draw when she's played. Her stats are not great at 2 2 for 3 ink, but considering the one card that you draw, this Maleficent is still a pretty decent card to play. Friends on the other side and Maleficent Sorceress combined, which by the way, don't forget you still have Magic. Magic Mirror, Amethyst looks to be one of the best inks to let you dig through your deck. For the final Amethyst card, we get Jafar, Wicked Sorcerer, a 4 cost character with 2 5 stats that's already comparable to many of the other 4 cost characters in terms of total stats, but he gets plus 3 challenger, which brings him up to 5 5 when he challenges. This makes him a really strong card to use since the 5 5 stats give him the ability to take on not just only 4 cost characters, he even has the ability to take out certain 5 or 6 cost characters like Mulan, Aurora, or Stitch and still survive the challenge. Which, if you combine it with Amethyst White Rabbit's Pocket Watch to give it Rush, might make this one of the strongest 4 cost characters yet. Moving on, we have. Amber Ink. Area on human legs, she's essentially a vanilla card with no abilities but worse because she has the ability of voiceless where she's unable to exert to sing songs which is really fitting as she loses her voice in exchange for human legs in the film. That isn't too great because she has the exact same stats as Captain Hook, Captain of the Jolly Roger who has a great ability of retrieving fire cannons. Of course she has some pluses in comparison seeing that she can be played in the ink well and she has one more law but Still not great overall. Thankfully, there's a much better option for Amber characters from Gamma with Maximus, Relentless Pursuer. He has decent stats and he even got the Aurora Briar Rose type of ability to reduce a character by 2 strength for the turn, which is really good. There's one interesting point to note for the ability though. Both Maximus and Briar Rose have chosen character gets minus 2 strength, but Scar Mastermind ability can only be used on the chosen opposing character, making it much more versatile since you can also reduce your own character strength, which might be useful in the future if we get a card that requires strength to be below a certain number. Compared to Scar and Aurora though, Maximus has the lowest cost at 3 ink for such an ability which makes me think that he's a definite must play for Ember decks. Another Ember card we got, which is also one of the first foil cards we got to see, is Be Our Guest. There is a 2 ink song card which lets you look at the top 4 cards of your deck, pick out a character card from there and put the rest in the bottom of the deck in any order. This is really good since digging 4 cards deep into your deck is a pretty good amount and getting to play this for free makes this a really good deal. Including the mulligan that you get at the start of the game, Be Our Guest makes it so that you have a much higher chance of getting the character card that you need at the right time. Now, we got 2 more cards starting with Emerus the Beast is Mine. It costs 3 to give a character reckless, which is a new keyword that makes it so that the character cannot quest and must challenge if able. This is an interesting card as it's definitely meant to be paired up with Cruella and Cheshire Cat, so they can get to pull off their abilities that only trigger when they get challenged and banished. I'm not too sure how good is this card though since we need more detailed rulings on how reckless work, like when does reckless kick in? Must your opponent challenge at the start of the turn? Currently, it looks like your opponent can challenge with the character anytime in their turn, which in this case, they can still use song cards to exert the character to escape from having the challenge. So this card might not be too great of a card. Luckily, we got a much better card with Mickey Mouse Musketeer, who has 2 strength and 7 willpower. Pretty decent for a card with Bodyguard. Aside from Maleficent Monstrous Dragon, there are no characters that can dish out 7 damage at one go at the moment, so Mickey Mouse Musketeer should stay on the board for pretty long. 
Furthermore, he also has his all for one ability, which gives all other Musketeers plus one strength. Does this mean that we could get the other two Musketeers, Goofy and Donner, in the first chapter? We'll have to wait and see, but this looks really interesting. And that's about it for all the new cards we got from the Gamma Expo. But as you might have noticed, the last three cards were all foil cards, which the Lokana team showed off at their booth. There's videos where you can see what the foil cards look like that I've placed in my article or Mushu report, so you definitely have to check it out. But I have to say that some of these look really good, and I look forward to opening some of these foil cards in my pack. Aside from the new cards though, one of the big news from the event is also the presentation that the Lokana team made for the gaming industry partners. They initially planned to hold the presentation in a smaller room, but due to the overwhelming response, they had to move to a much bigger hall. I have the details of what was covered on the Mushu Report site, so I won't go through all of them here. But here's a few important key points that I want to share regarding releases. Firstly, the booster boxes will have paper pool tabs that will require you to destroy the box to access the packs, preventing scammers from resealing boxes. Ravensburger has also confirmed that they have underestimated the demand for the first chapter, but they are working hard to print more and they will reprint as they feel is needed. Furthermore, there will be no reserve list like Magic the Gathering has and any card can be reprinted at any time. This is fantastic news for the players, simply because it means that anyone who wants to play Lokana will be able to play without worrying about how other people might be holding up the stock for an investment. In fact, it even makes it so that you don't have to worry about paying above MSRP from scalpers because everyone will eventually get stock, though you might just have to wait a bit. Hopefully, this bit of news helps to deter anyone who had planned to hoard a big amount of the first chapter, treating it as an investment, because there's simply no point to do so right now because they can just reprint the first chapter anytime, which I fully expect that will happen when they reprint it for any other regions which they might expand to in the future, so that the new players in those regions can get access to the cards they need as well. There are other interesting bits to take in from the presentation, such as how using multiple languages in a single deck is allowed and how there will also be software to assist organized play. Lots of good stuff. If you want to read up more, head over to the article on mushureport.com, link in the video description below. And that's about it from me today. I want to say big thanks to the people like the Illumiteers, Dan Rieger, and citizens of Lokana who were on site at Gamma Expo and are responsible for getting us all of this great news. You're going to check out everything that they experienced at the Expo. I have them linked in the video description below as well, so give them a follow. Thanks a lot for watching, folks. This is D Thurman from Mush Report, signing out.